Michael, the relationship between evolution and religion is a, a tense one and a fraught one. You've been a major player in this whole, this whole saga. Um, you call yourself an accommodationist, and you said, I'm very proud of it. Uh, other people would call you that name <laughs> as a slur. <laughs> Why? Well, that's a good question. Uh, <clears throat> on the one hand, there's no question but that science and religion can clash and that evolution and Christianity can clash. Uh, if you are an evangelical of the kind in Florida where I live, you believe that the earth is 6,000 years old, that we were created in six days, that there was a universal flood. Now, if you're an evolutionist, these are all false. So you can't do the two together. However, anybody who's done any history of Christianity knows that this is not traditional Christianity. St. Augustine, 400 AD, wrestled with this one. And what he said was, the ancient Jews were not sophisticated people like us Romans. <laughs> that if God had spoken to them in terms of science, they wouldn't have known what the hell he was talking about. So he spoke to them allegorically. He didn't tell them untruths. It was true that God was creator, that God had a sp made a special position for us, and at some level we're tainted with sin. But how it happened is another matter. Uh, so. Consequently, I've always felt, and I think a lot of people feel, that when you come to something like evolutionary biology, those immediate things of, oh, it can't work because it clashes with six days, you know, that's not where more sophisticated thinkers are at, either Christians or Darwinians. So where do you go from there? Now, there are certainly those like Richard Dawkins who want to say, nevertheless, evolutionary theory shows that all the claims about Christianity have to be false and that, you know, it just doesn't work. And there are others, like Charles Darwin himself, who says, I'm not a Christian, but why am I not a Christian? For theological reasons. My father and my brother, particularly my, my father was the best man I ever knew, but he denied the existence of God. According to Christians, he's going to everlasting hell and damnation. He's, Darwin said, I just don't want anything to do with a religion. Mm -hmm. now, he wasn't saying, I don't want anything to do with a religion that di denies dinosaurs. He was, mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, we know Darwin's closest personal friend was the vicar of Down where he lived. And they worked together, they ate together, they laughed together, and at Christmas, they put together, you know, funds for the poor law to provide coals and food for the poor and that sort of thing. And later in life, when the vicar retired and went somewhere else, he wrote to Darwin, and there's a very nice letter. He says, one thing I always appreciated about our relationship was that neither was felt that religion and science were in conflict. Sure, I'm more interested in religion, you're more interested in science, but neither of us felt that they were in conflict. And certainly neither of us felt the less for the other one for being in science or being in religion. That, that just never came up. You know. And I think basically, as I, I think I've said, I grew up as a Quaker, and Quakers are very good at that sort of thing. That, yes, we don't have any dogmas. We don't have any creeds or anything like that. And I think if you ask Quakers about substitution and, and <laughs> atonement, that Christ died on the cross, they'd look at you as though you were queer in the head. I mean, the idea that somebody 2,000 years ago would die in agony for me, my sins. No, please, God. I make the sins, I'm responsible. I'm the one who should apologize. Nobody's gonna wash away those sins, it, they're my sins. So I've always grown up with that kind of position. So I've always felt very comfortable with a position of the two together. Now, as it happens, personally, about the age of 20, and it wasn't a Saul on the road to Damascus experience mm -hmm. in reverse, I, as I think it was with Richard Dawkins, yeah. but what I can make out, suddenly in, in chapel at school at the age of 16, he suddenly said, I believe, I'm an atheist, da 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 dum. <laughs> Never happened that way for me, just, you know, suddenly I said, you know, I don't believe anymore. But I've all, basically, pretty much, I've always been, you wanna call me an agnostic, I don't much care for that word because my wife's an agnostic. But that means she's totally uninterested. If you ask my wife about the relationship between Abraham and Isaac, she might think, were they gay lovers? And I say, no, that was David and Jonathan. <laughs> no, but the point is, she's just not interested. But I'm like Thomas Henry Huxley. I, I, 
I obsess about this. I call myself a passionate agnostic. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, so for me, but as I say, I grew up as a Quaker. And Quakers have always been big into mysticism and that sort of thing. Rufus Jones at Haverford College was an expert and wrote, and I read those sorts of things when I was, you know, little more than a kid. So I grew up, so for me, the whole question about God and these is the unknown. It doesn't mean to say that God does exist, but for me, to say God does not exist, you know, is equally, uh, equally wrong. It, it's called apophatic theology. It's the theology of saying, I can't say what God is. I can say what God is not. It doesn't mean to say that God doesn't exist. And of course, for a Quaker, again, it's so important that Christianity not be the exclusive religion, that there's got to be a place for Islam. There's got to be a place for the Hindus. There's got to be a place for, for Buddhism. I'm not sure whether there's going to be a place for California pagans, but you know, <laughs> Quakers are nice people. They probably do their best. Although I don't know many Quakers who would say you have to take off your clothes and dance around <laughs> the bonfire at midnight. But anyhow, but, so as I say, th th for me, this has always been a natural that the two. And so this was why in 1981, I, along with another's, a number like uh, Langdon Gilkey, the leading Protestant theologian, and Stephen Jay Gould, the well-known biologist and popularizer, uh, went down to Arkansas to argue on behalf of the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, against a law that had just been passed, insisting that in the schools, if they were going to, in biology classes, if they were going to teach evolution, they had also to teach creationism, balanced treatment. And so this was why I and others went down to testify against this. As it happens, and here, as I said, I'm not very modest. They were very worried about putting me on the stand. I mean, you, you, you've heard me. The thought of me being up there on my own, because you know, that gave them the collie wobbles. They did finally put me up. And it was very interesting because I discovered that the big issue here was philosophical. The big, they, they wanted to say, Everybody's into Kuhn. Kuhn says there are paradigms, incommensurables. So, in other words, evolutionary theory, Darwin, and creationism are incommensurable. It isn't that one's right and one's wrong. They're, they're together, they're, they're equal in that sense. Where I, I'm not sure I'm a Popperian, but I sort of push the Popperian line of saying, oh no, oh no, creationism is false. But more than that, because there's nothing in the Constitution which says you, you can't teach uh, bad science. <laughs> It says you can't teach religion, or it used to, till we got the, the Supreme Court. But anyhow, so that was what my job, to argue that creationism was a religion. And I was able to do this perfectly happily. And after that, I joined a little group who meet once a year, the Institute on Religion in an Age of Science, who are mainly UUs, Unitarian Universalists, and United Church of Christ. And I go for a, a week every, every year to Star Island off the coast of New Hampshire for their conferences. They know I'm a non-believer, but I've never felt more comfortable amongst a group of people than there. And they're so comfortable with me because my position is exactly that of Charles Darwin. I'm interested in science and philosophy, that sort of thing. You're into religion much more than I am, but why should we quarrel? I mean, it's, it's different perspectives. We're all trying to make our way through the, you know, this veil, of, what is it, the veil of soul making, as Keats called it. Sure. And it's so exciting. Sure, sure. It, it terrifying, is. terrifying. But, but you'd be accused, and uh, sometimes I am as well, of, uh, by your accommodationism, of, of uh, allowing religion to flourish. And so people criticize you for that because, um, it, because of what they perceive to be the harm that religion has done to, 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 to people. Anybody who listens to what I've taught, anybody who reads what I've written would know that that's absolutely total BS. Because first of all, I went to Arkansas to argue against it. And now just recently, <clears throat> I've written a book where I'm dealing with things like homosexuality. Just this last week, the Roman Catholic bishops in America, on the one hand said, you, you, homosexuality is, is wrong, it's evil, and abortion is wrong, it's evil. On the other hand, we just learned that the Diocese of Baltimore, where the bishop there is number two in that org bishop's organization, 600 children were mm -hmm. molested by 150 priests, and they knew about it. So 
anybody, and I write about this, I write about the hypocrisy of this. So anybody who says that I'm easy on religion, you know, they, they're saying that because they want to say that. And of course, you know, I hate to say this, new atheists are as bad as, Christi as evangelical Christians mm. as labeling their opponents with views they don't have. I mean, you know, they, I mean, Richard Dawkins, is, I like Richard Dawkins, you know, but he's terrible at doing that, at labeling others, you know, with the tar brush, which is so totally inappropriate, as of course are evangelical Christians. <clears throat> By making them equivalent though, the, 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 the science behind each one, the, forgetting their, their, uh, their, their social graces, uh, which is a whole different subject, uh, there's no question that the evolutionary science that Dawkins proposes is much more true to be mi very mild about it than the... Yeah, but Dawkins didn't sell God knows how many million copies of the God delusion because of the science. Dawkins sold it because the first paragraph is the God of the Old Testament is a A, B, C, you know, rather rude philosophical words right down. I mean, Dawkins' strength, if you like, power, and all of these things, and the others, you know, new atheists, uh, you know, uh, people like Dan Dennett and others, and, and would be, you know, in the group like Jerry Coyne, the biologist at Chicago. They're there not because they're evolutionists. They're there because they're holding forth about faith being, you know, the same sort of thing as science, and faith is for cowards who can't face up to reality. Well, I want to say, no, I personally do not have faith. But for me, having faith is not going to involve you in making claims that, that science is going to disagree with. Science says, yes, it all started with the Big Bang. What is Christianity, what does religion say? It doesn't say, it, it's quite happy with the Big Bang. But its question is, not when did it start like that, but Heidegger's fundamental question in metaphysics, why is there something rather than nothing? And that is not a question that science even addresses. It, it's not in the paradigm. It's not, it, it's not in the machine metaphor, because the machine metaphor is like the cookbook. First take your, you know, mm -hmm. your bits for the Enigma machine, and then let's put them together. In other words, it doesn't say, but where did they mine the whatever? You can go, keep going back, but at some point, you're gonna stop and say, okay, I've had enough, let's get back to the enigma machine. Whereas Christianity, or rather religion, is saying, why is there some, why is there anything at all rather than nothing? And of course, as I say, this is Heidegger's question, and that's mine.